On the Cardano blockchain, there is a small but fanatical crowd of NFT traders. But this small group of traders and their beloved NFT projects exploded in prices and valuations over the last month. In the last few weeks, the floors of about two dozen CNFT projects has increased. Some by 2x, some by 5x, and some others still by 10x. There were multiple high ticket NFT sales being sold. And in this video, I want to talk about the reasons why the CNFT space has been exploding lately. And more importantly, how you and I can capitalize on this momentum. And don't miss out on my plan on how we buy and sell these NFTs for profit so we're not stuck holding them back. My name is Aaron. I'm just a cowboy out here exploring the wild west of cryptocurrency. And and my curiosity led me to Cardano. Now, if you don't know, most NFT projects rely on the Ethereum blockchain, but there are some on Solana, VeChain, and today we're talking about Cardano. The good thing about playing on a smaller chain with less people is that on Ethereum, with all the traffic, all those other people, it tends to be more expensive. However, on the Cardano blockchain, things are a lot more affordable. If you're not on the Cardano blockchain, all you have to do to get on it is to download the NAMI wallet, transfer some ADA over from your exchange on the Cardano network, and then go to jpg.store and start researching some projects you like over there. I also hold a weekly stream on CNFTs every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard. But I've been doing some research on why the explosive growth of the CNFT space in the last few weeks. And I could break them down into eight reasons and I could classify them into two groups. One, the fundamental reasons, and two, the catalytic reasons. Let's look at the first four fundamental reasons first. Consistent time building in the ecosystem, the creators of Cardano have been building in a declining market. This is different from a growing market where money is fast and easy. You simply have to add more dedication, more time in, better value, unique approach, and a genuine community. And I've seen these other projects start and do that consistently. I watch how these projects are consistently engaging. I watch how these creators are consistently trying to build their market share up. Everyone's fighting for scraps. Everyone's hungry and it brings the best. It brings high competition, high quality out into the market. One example I see of this is the Mallard Order and the way they launched their project. They had an extensive marketing phase with a lot of scarcity, a lot of unknown, a lot of lore, a lot of mythology. It was just a ton of fun. I was literally trying to learn how to make paper origami ducks or birds or whatever and take pictures of them at the park. It's, it, it, was, it was ridiculous. It didn't make sense. The second is that the conviction level for Cardano is very, very high. I remember on stream getting into a debate with Tal Crypto, who is a major CNFT influencer in the space. And he told me that one ADA equals one ADA and that storing your income and storing your wealth in a CNFT was better than storing it in Bitcoin. And I about lost my socks on him. Now, whether or not you agree or disagree with him or me is beside the point. And I've got nothing but love for Tao. But when you say that kind of stuff, like a CNFT is, is a better store of value than Bitcoin, at least I could acknowledge that you have a high <laughs> conviction for Bitcoin. And he's not the only one. There's a whole bunch of them. There's a whole bunch of them that, that are acting like that. See, I believe that when you're buying into crypto and buying into different projects, you're really not buying it it for the tech, you're not really buying it for the project, you're buying it for the conviction level of the community. How high is the conviction level of its community and how will that sustain and be gravitas for more people around it in the future? Number three is that the Cardano community's perception of who owns the blockchain is not the VCs. A lot of public perception is that on Ethereum or Solana or these other L1 blockchains is that there are VCs, venture capitalists, who own the bulk lion's share of the coins of that particular blockchain. However, it wasn't like that for Cardano. Now, the reason why you wouldn't want a venture capitalist or big whales holding humongous bags is because they're going to dump on you and they're going to drop the price of the project unfairly on you. And I say unfairly because they were able to get in way earlier than other people were able to get in at a fair rate. Here's a quick clip of Charles Hoskinson, the founder of Cardano, explaining how this worked out against Cardano. But for the long term, this is why it will be sustainable. Do you think that VCs overlook the Cardano ecosystem? Some do, some don't. It just depends on the location. Is it a family office? Is it, I mean, certainly A16Z and others are like, eh, Cardano. But you know, the problem is that we didn't- Why do you think that is? Because we didn't have any Ponzanomics for them. 
I mean, let's be honest here. The vast majority of VCs, let's just be honest, the way they approach it is liquidity. So they say, when is the token coming out? Where's the marketplace for the token going to be? Do I get an early distribution? How do I exit that early distribution when the retail people come in? And you've seen numerous layer ones and dApps, we won't name names, where they launch to market at a very hard, high valuation. The insiders dump, they go down, and they walk away with a lot of money. You know, and so there wasn't a lot of Ponzanomics to offer, and it was a fair distribution of Cardano. It's one of the, it has a great Gini coefficient. There's, it's one of the most distributed currencies in terms of distribution. So there was no insider distribution to go and sell. Some of these layer ones, which you guys track on your platform, the insider distribution is greater than 50%. So if you're a VC, you say, oh, wow, if I get involved in this, and I get 10% of the supply, and I could get 100x in six months, this is my favorite thing in the whole wide world. They look at Cardano, and they say, well, where's that opportunity? We say, well, it doesn't exist. It's an egalitarian distribution. So ah, I got nothing for you. And number four, I've spent some time in this space now, and what I could see is that there is a spirit of collaboration over competition. I see a lot of projects, a lot of their founders and developers and artists collaborating, talking to each other. Not only are they talking and engaging with their community, but they're also talking and engaging with other creators and, and, and developers, and it's, it's actually awesome to see. I see multiple examples of this from the biggest projects to the smallest projects. A smaller project like Cardopoly that takes after like a monopoly type of game includes different types of projects in and around their board game. And then you get something like Ape Society where you could have different projects stake their project in their little ape frame and make some passive income with their society token that way. So I see a small community that is willing to collaborate and build up the greater Cardano community as a whole together. When I asked Twitter the question, why is the CNFT space exploding? It was littered with fundamental reasons. These fundamental reasons are fantastic and cannot be overlooked. However, there are timely, catalytic reasons why the CNFT space has been blowing up, especially in these last few weeks. Number one and most clear to me is the explosion of the Ape Society project. Their floor went from 1,800 ADA to like 16,000 ADA at one point. Apes have been regularly trading between 9,000 and 11,000 as a floor price. And when more money buys in on these apes, that gets filtered and cycled down into the other projects. So I could see someone who sells an ape at a high price and then filters that money into smaller projects like Yummy or Mallards. The second timely reason is that Solana has been just going down a lot lately. There's negative momentum in the Solana ecosystem when Cardano has been reliable, safe, and constant. Solana has been having a lot of shutdowns, losing faith in its community members, and just getting a lot of bad press. Number three, and this is a debated one, but people think that there is new money entering into the Cardano ecosystem. Notably, people on the Solana and Ethereum chains who are getting tired with looking at stagnant projects over there come and start exploring their curiosity and found Cardano. And there's lots of reasons for this. Ethereum projects have stalled out, they're expensive, and their money might go further on the Cardano ecosystem. They could buy into the best projects on Cardano immediately and not have to save up and probably even be a small whale there. Some of the surge that at least I can tell are from people like Wob or BitBoy himself. Cardano community. Where they're bringing in their community into the Cardano ecosystem by making videos or posting tweets. Now this reason is a little bit contested and the reason why is because I don't really see new money inflowing into Cardano. That's just not the story with any charts. And I'm going to use a clip from Blake CNFT. He's another influencer that I actually met in person at a live event where he kind of breaks down what he thinks is happening with this whole perception of new money. So like we said, like October 17th was when a lot of these NFTs really started to go crazy. And our, we just started seeing floors go, go wild. And what Guacal does, and I don't have a reason to believe that this wouldn't be accurate, um, it has you know this lighter color returning buyers. And then the first time buyers is this purple line. So if you look, 145 first time buyers on October 16th, 185, again, new first-time buyers, 241, 231, 162, 194, 246. If you add all those numbers up of new first-time buyers, that's maybe 1,000, 1,500. I'm just kind of going off the top of my head of new people. That's pretty small. When you think about how all of those floors went up, what actually happened, according to this chart, is people who already either already had Cardano wallets or 
just got bored with Cardano NFTs for whatever reason, they started getting re-engaged in the community. So 1,700 returning buyers all the way up to you know 3,400, which is pretty crazy. Um, so shout out to just all the Cardano people who are doing awesome things and uh, coming back into the ecosystem. So we've seen, like I said, crazy floors and um, you know a lot of excitement. And it was basically all the same people <laughs> in, inside of our ecosystem. So we haven't even really hit a mainstream adoption, mass adoption. So uh, pretty impressive there for, for our community. So he seems to think it's not new money, it's re-energized money. And I think this makes a lot of sense. Because of live in-person events like Rare Bloom or CNFT Con, this kind of re-energized, re-engaged the existing community. But no doubt in comparison with the fundamentals and some new eyeballs who have some bigger pockets, maybe there is something in there that it's like small enough that we can't find it, but large enough to still move some markets in the Cardano ecosystem. It's, this one's up for debate. And the number four timely reason is that ADA right now is at a very cheap rate. And this does two things. One, it allows people to invest even heavier. If you've got high conviction for Cardano, you're investing more. If you're curious, this is a good time for entry. The cheaper prices allow people to buy in, especially when Cardano's really been seen as a dollar for the majority of the last year. The second thing I think the cheaper price does is that it allows people to manipulate and change the price of their NFT that they're selling. If Cardano drops from 60 cents to 30 cents, I would think to recoup some of that and use that as a reason to raise the floor price on my NFT, maybe by 10% or 20%. I'm not too sure how much, but if I was someone selling the NFT, but the value of the ADA dropped, I would be increasing the number of ADA for my NFT. So those are eight reasons why I think the CNFT space is exploding right now. I personally vouch for a lot of its creators, characters, and influencers in the space. I think they're amazing people, hardworking people that have become my friends. I personally intend on buying a lot of the blue chip projects right now, like Ape Society, Clay Nation, Yummy, Mallards, and getting in on some good mints that carry a lot of hype and a lot of attention to detail. If you want to talk more about trading NFTs on the Cardano ecosystem, we have that stream every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We would love for you to join. And you can check out this video about what I think is the number one project on the Cardano ecosystem, Clay Nation. And if you appreciate this video, give me a like if you're feeling quite generous and join the saloon. That's the Discord channel. We'd love to talk to you there too. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.